Hi. Shalom. Namaste. This is Henry in Tiberias, Israel. I'm in what remain of a synagogue from the 4th century that was built on top of a synagogue that was here from the 1st century at the time that Jesus Christ was having his ministry around the Sea of Galilee. It is on the Sea of Galilee that he is known to have walked on water and in this synagogue which is very special because it was surrounded by 17 hot springs that have been used since antiquity. Some scholars have speculated that Jesus Christ performed some of his miracle around the hot springs of Tiberias. How did people live in the first century at the time of Jesus Christ? There is a program in Nazareth where a nonprofit organization has tried to replicate some of the activities, professions. So today we will visit this village. So with me, you will have an impression of what life at the time of Jesus Christ was like. Archaeologists have found in this synagogue the best preserved mosaic floor of a synagogue anywhere in Israel dating from the fourth century. So before we go into the village in Nazareth, Israel, I would like to show you that marvelous piece of art. This is the best preserved mosaic floor ever discovered of a synagogue in Israel. The work is extremely intricate, beautiful. to graze during the day and then they would be brought home and put inside the sheepfold. That will go over there next. Also had uh, carpentry skill with skills. And right now he's using an adz, the hammer axe combination. Wow, it's also a hammer. And this, right. this basically is a plane which looks very much like the one I have at my farm to this day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very little difference. Oh. And there's all kinds of tools. Here's some chisels. Yeah. And this would be a coarser stone. This would be used to sand things, to smooth it out. Oh, very cool. To, and uh, if you look around you, there's all kinds of uh, tools here or things that he has made. Here's a huge spoon. Those saws would be not too different from the one. Here, I'll, he'll demonstrate something. You can guess what this is. Yep. Well, <laughs> well, that's the same. And he could use that to make a fire when he's finished working. Yeah, that yeah. Could probably yeah, work. We've never had a fire in here, so I don't know. No, no, but but this oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's to drill a hole. Right. Yeah, yeah drill a hole. That's yes. Wow. You saw the sheep uh, at, at the pen over there? Yeah. Once a, a year they are shorn for wool and that would look like that. Yeah. And then it is washed to get the, the, the dirt out of it. And then it is carded, it's pulled through here to make it like this. Okay. And then Hannah will show you, I think, how it, how you spin that into yeah. yarn. Yes. But by the way, she's making a doll here right now. There, and that's still how you, how you make yarn, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> and 
this always amazes me when she does that to turn that into yarn. Oh, so she just adds it. Yeah, she twists it together. Twists it together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where did but, she learn this? Oh, well, she's here. Been, here, she's been at it Nazareth for village. twenty some years, I think. How many years have you worked here? I oh, am yeah? seventeen. Seventeen. There you go. Oh, so, so she's had practice. Yes, a lot. So mm -hmm. that, this is what the yarn would look like. But notice, this is sort of a, a nondescript color. And people even in that day wanted different colors. So they would use a green from plants and leaves to make, make a green uh, yarn. They would use red for, uh, to make pomegranate, pomegranate to make the red ones, uh, onion skin to make the brownish uh, ones, and uh, the purple and the, and the blue were the hardest to make. And that, those they made out of seashells. Wow. And it takes thousands of seashells just to dye one, uh, it's expensive. Very expensive. And that's why only royalty or very, very wealthy people can Oh, wear that's work. why royal colors were purple. That's yes, correct. Yep. Yeah, and also because the Jewish thing, the, the... They put it, the garment, yeah, on the... garment. The, yeah, the tzitzit. That's yes, right. the blue yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. So that's because of... In the Hebrew, they say talit. 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 So, the, Hannah weaves these panels. And to do a complete panel would take her eight hours of continuous yeah. weaving just to do one. But to make clothes, yes. it must have been something more refined than this, no? The same technique. The same technique, I guess, just finer, finer threads, I would think. Finer threads, yeah. Uh, like this would be fairly coarse. Oh, okay. So basically, it's over and under, over and under, is mm -hmm. the way she does. I better get her a picture. Wow. No, God. That would take a long time. Oh yeah, like just eight hours just to make one one finish one of these up. And now notice how she's going to put it closer, put it closer together. She's compressing it so it doesn't get loose or sloppy. Look at that tool. Do you think that was the same tool that they? That would everything have? here has been re reproduced as closely as we possibly. The panels finished. She cuts off the bottom ends, and then she makes dolls out of them. Nothing goes to waste at Hannah's place. <laughs> she's she's an amazing woman. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Henry. Thank you so much. Uh, the hole underneath those baskets is about like that, about a meter deep. So it runs in there, and uh, the oil swoops to the top, so you can just scoop it off the top. And uh, scoop it off of the top of what? Uh, here, this if, if you press this, and the fluid runs in the hole in the bottom. Yeah, and then you get the first press that goes to the temple in Jerusalem. That's called, uh, that's it's part of the offering to God. Oh. Then they put weights on here to put more pressure on those baskets. And the second press, with let's say one weight on it, is fairly clean oil, and that is used for cooking and for cosmetics and for pharmacy. Then they take all, put all these weights, winch all of these weights up so there's more pressure on there. And that's where the third press comes from. And that oil would have a little bit of impurity in it. And so that's used for candles and for soap. You press as much oil as you can. Then whatever is left over is set aside because there's a little bit of oil left in, in the remains. And that would be used as, as a fire starter. Now you may remember that in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Gethsemane actually means olive press. Uh, Jesus went to pray three times. Jesus was under a lot, a great deal of pressure at that time, uh, just like the olive are under pressure here. So there's a lot of comparisons between, or between an operating olive press and what happened at the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> He said, I am the Messiah for all people, even the Roman oppressors. And so he wasn't very popular. This was a stretch from what the local people were waiting. They were waiting for somebody to rescue them, not everybody. And this could uh, also dramatically affect how we think about people that are not like us. Mm -hmm. Is Jesus for everybody? Or is he just for me and my friends?